Hi, this is Hugh Cushing from White Source, and this is the next in a series of videos outlining our Bitbucket integration. And today I'm going to talk about White Source Renovate. White Source Renovate is a little bit different from what you may be used to. It's, a, it's turned off by default. You have to enable it yourself, but it's a very cool feature. Um, the, it was originally an open source project um, that uh, uh, White Source acquired a couple of years ago, and now the person that developed that is the head of product management for us. Um, it's, it's a uh, solution that allows you to always keep your open source libraries as up to date as possible, and you can define it what up to date means. Uh, you know, do you want to jump major versions? Do you want to jump minor versions? Those sorts of things, uh, but it's a way to be proactive about open source functionality and also security. Uh, the idea behind it is if you run Renovate, you can, uh, you will find out about releases sooner rather than later. Your you'll have work with your code to, to work with those versions sooner rather than later. You get access to those new features, and perhaps you will avoid having a security vulnerability show up in a running production code that had been fixed in a previous uh, iteration of that of that open source library. So it's it's useful. I mean, it's not it's not for everybody, but uh, a lot of people think it's best development hygiene to keep all your open source libraries up to date. It's very configurable. I want to show you to, to the website renovatebot.com, which is where it's de um, documented. It's also documented on whitesourcesoftware.com, but hub it seems to be around here and especially uh, the URL docs.renovatebot.com that'll give you all kinds of details about how you can tailor it and customize it and other features I'm not going to have a chance to discuss today but let me show you how it shows up in Bitbucket in our Bitbucket integration first thing to know is that you have to turn it on the the normal dot white source file is not uh, is going to have settings that don't enable renovate by default. Um, but if you want to use it, you can add a new section to the, your .white source file that looks like this. Okay. It's, it's a remediate settings uh, section, and the key setting is uh, enable renovate. And you set that to true. Another neat feature that I think it's worth turning on anytime you use renovate uh, is the merge confidence feature. Okay. And if you want to enable that as well, you need to add this little bit of line here to the white source config file. Um, I know you can't copy paste it. I wish you could, but so I'll just leave it here for a second. You can stop the video and, and uh, grab the syntax of that. But once you've added that section, and don't forget the comma before the previously final section, which is typically issue settings, uh, once you've added these lines here, then you're going to get renovate to run on this repository. And what does that mean? Well, you're suddenly going to see a lot more pull requests created automatically, probably. Okay. So whereas, whereas before, when we were only creating pull requests to solve security problems, there were, I think there were only four of them based on the policy, I think of high and medium severity only that I'd set for this organization. But there's a lot more uh, of the open source libraries that this project uses that were out of date than there were ones with security vulnerabilities. So that's what all these additional pull requests are about. You'll see uh, something new about it uh, and something very similar. The, the similar bit is that it's going to include a the change to upgrade the version of the particular library in question. So you'll see here it modified the POM to go up to version 3.2.3. Pretty simple. Another interesting thing that it will add when you turn Renovate on is this merge confidence feature. Okay, what that merge confidence feature is 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 a pretty cool way for you to be able to tell, hey, if I do upgrade, what are the chances I'm going to break my code? Okay, obviously, especially if you're jumping major releases, uh, but even minor releases sometimes behavior changes significantly from release to release, and you know it could uh, give you some surprises. Wouldn't it be nice to know if you could kind of take a look at the rest of an ecosystem and see how they did with the same upgrade. And that's what Merge Confidence is about. If you turn on Re Renovate by default, it's going to gather anonymous statistics uh, about how it 
you did when you when you upgrade to a particular version, how your code did, right? And for all the thousands and thousands of Renovate users across the globe, we gather that data anonymously, of course, and say, hey, how many builds did this did upgrading to this version break? And some other factors. So for example, so in this particular one, this PR that was created to upgrade this release to the latest, 3.2.3, we have some merge confidence data. First of all, there's the age of this new 3.2.3 library. It's only six days old, so that makes us a little nervous. That's why it's not green here. Uh, obviously, less it's been out, the fewer people have, have probably tried it and the fewer statistics we have on how successful it was. Adoption, uh, that means only, this is the percentage of our users, the Renovate users across the globe that have adopted this version who were using this mo this library in the first place. And that's only about 10%. So we give that a kind of a neutral color. Passing is kind of cool. Uh, that, that's the thing I was speaking about. Of those people who did adopt this version and who have uh, builds happening within Bitbucket pipelines, um, how many of their functional tests continued to pass after the upgrade? And since this is so new, we don't have any data on this particular one. So this last one is an overall rating. We have neutral confidence about whether this upgrade is going to affect your functionality or not. Whereas, let me go back to this list here. If I take a look at this one, this one looks a lot better. Uh, you'll see here that uh, here, the this upgrade that we're proposing to 3.0.0 uh, that 3.0.0 has been out for over a year. And um, so that's, we give that a green because there's been plenty of time for people to put it through its paces. A full third of people have moved, uh, that we have evidence from anyway, uh, have moved to this version of the, the plugin. And 100% of, uh, of the functional tests, or the, any, any of the tests in the pipelines that people were running within Bitbucket uh, after they upgraded this, 100% of those tests were, were passing. Uh, you know, obviously, RenovateBot neither knows nor cares what the tests were or what the what the functionality of the system was. All we care or not about or was whether or not the tests passed. And because these ratings are good, we give a very high confidence that upgrading to this version won't break your builds. I mean, we can't guarantee it, obviously, but uh, but uh, you know. This is good data to have when you decide whether to upgrade or not. So once you have that, uh, you're going to be able to keep a kind of an upgrade first uh, development hygiene around you. One other thing I wanted to show you was uh, how do you tell the difference between a pull request that was created by Renovate simply to just keep your dependencies up to date versus one that was created specifically to solve a uh, one or more CVEs? Well, that's easy. Uh, if you click on a pull request and it comes from the white source service account and it doesn't list any CVEs to be solved, uh, then you'll know it's just a, a, a renovate initiated upgrade. Whereas this one, which we'd seen earlier, if I can spell correctly, we click here, you'll also see that there are some CVEs listed that are go you're going to fix by upgrading to that. Great, thanks very much. Thank you for watching this presentation. And if you have further questions, please reach out to your white source representative or you can visit our website for more information.